All right, James, thank you. And thank you everybody for watching. Uh, we're going to focus on the forehand volley today and going to do a little train along and then also actually before we do the train along, I'll show you some slow motion. Going to give it a try. If not, we won't have the slow motion, but uh, let's see if I can get it to work. And then also um, we'll end the call just showing you a few things on positioning at the net and just talk a little bit about targets using this uh, board right here. Uh, now when it comes down to just basic stroking patterns in tennis, you have three basic stroking patterns and it's very important when you work on the volley that you can differentiate between that. So uh, when it comes to ground strokes, you have a circular lifting motion for topspin. For the serve and overhead, you have a circular, uh, sorry, a figure of eight throwing motion for the serve and overhead. And if you watch James's calls, the, the serve and overhead pretty much from this point forward are pretty much the same. Just swing up a little bit more on the overhead. And then on volleys, it's a pushing linear motion. All right, so that's key to remember. I wish I'd known this when I was uh, growing up and playing. I used to swing at my volleys and I, it, it was t certainly a lot. I was trying to match the sensation of when I was hitting a ground stroke. They're two different sensations. So hopefully you'll, you'll get this next time you're on the court, you can try it out. You want to think that volleying is a pushing sensation. It's pushing, but you'll feel like you're pushing towards the back of the ball. It's a lot different to if you're hitting a ground stroke. So very important that you can differentiate between those things. As I mentioned, a volley is more of a linear, straight line. Okay, so it's, I want you to imagine as we go through the progressions today, that there's a tabletop right here, running the direction of your target, or the court, and your butt cap is lined up on that table, and it's gliding along that tabletop. Butt cap's gliding, all right? You're pushing from your shoulder. But before we get started with the train along, I'd like to share my screen, attempt to do that, and just show you a, a, a foreign volley in slow motion, just so you get a better visual picture of everything, and then we'll break it down to some key components. And you know, the volley is one of those things which everything can be worked at home, but volleys are actually a lot easier because it requires a lot less space and wall space to do so. All right, so let's see if I can uh, get this right here. So I'm going to do uh, share content maybe. No. Um, oh, I don't think I have permissions yet, James. Aha. Uh -huh. Zoom. Nope. Okay. Only the host can share this meeting. Okay. Well, then uh, we won't have the slow motion. Ah. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, -ho! screen, share. Okay, start broadcast. Okay. Here we go. Looks like we're in business, eh? And so I think it's recording my screen as well. Okay, here we go. Great. Can you all see that all right, James? Okay, so we're going to just take a look at this um, forehand volley. We do a forehand and a backhand, but we're just going to focus on the forehand today. But just watch this. It's in slow motion. And okay, it's not running. <laughs> I'll just drag it myself. Okay, and we'll just look at the backhand. Oh, there's a forehand. Okay, so, as we were saying, let's get to the first one here. You know, volleys is a pushing sensation, but also, when you volley, you want to volley with your legs. Okay, when you volley with your legs, then you are, you'll have to swing less. A lot of people don't use their legs and then they have to overcompensate with the arm and then they lose the hitting zone. So key things in the volley, you want to have a nice split step. And one thing we talk about here is lining up with the incoming ball. Now what I mean by lining up is watch my right foot, the outside foot, and watch my hand and racket. So Ava's on the other side, they're hitting towards my forehand as soon as I land, recognize it's going to the forehand, notice how I very quickly line up the hands and the feet. See how almost in sync with one another. Like if you had to have 
a broomstick or something connected to the butt cap and the right toe, it's almost like they're connected there. So very quickly, you want to line up the foot, the hand, but the strings in the path of the incoming ball. That's gonna help you to prepare early, but also it's gonna help prevent you from taking a big take back. So you wanna line up as quickly as you can, because once you get to this position right here, where your strings are on line with the incoming ball, now all you gotta do is push with this leg. Push forward to contact. Okay, and you'll notice how then I land on this other leg. Now a lot of you have probably been taught to just step across with this foot, okay? Drawn in red, just to take a step across. Now if you study the best players in the world, they actually take a step out. Now that step will be determined on how far away that ball is from you. You know, if it's coming close to you, you actually may step behind, which I'll show you, all right? But you'll see they step out, because it helps you to cover distance, but it helps you load this outside leg. And the great thing about this is that if you've listened to our ground strokes uh, training and also our return to serve training, this concept will, 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 will um, apply to all other parts of the game. So there's a lot of crossovers. If you learn this, it will help you with other parts of your game on your return to serve, line up for, for your forward ground stroke, and also on your approach shot. All right, this line up idea here. Set up with the outside leg. Now, you notice as I go forward to contact, there's very little take back here. See how the racket is just ever so slightly back. I'm gonna contact the ball, but notice how I'm stepping through the point of contact using momentum. So I'm gonna contact the ball. This left foot's gonna to continue to move through contact. It will land once the ball has left the racket. Okay, now very often we'll ask players this in clinics, should you step and hit simultaneously or land and hit simultaneously, land before you hit or land after you hit? All right, I think I gave you the answer already, but you wanna actually land after you hit because you get momentum. What happens if you step simultaneously, if you land as you contact the ball, your racket's gonna to wanna to go down. Rick Braden used to talk about being in a car, seat belt on. If you hit the brakes, what happens? You go forward and down. So you want that foot moving through an ideal situation. All right? So look at the feet. Recognize it's a forehand. Come down on the split. Immediately line up the hands and the feet. Right here. Then we're going to step through with this inside leg. Contact. Ball's gone. And then land. Okay? Now... Let's look at the swing a little bit. Now, I would tell myself I could organize my ready position a little bit better, all right? <laughs> you wanna have those elbows out slightly. We talk about the elbows being slightly in front of your hips. So when you step out and turn, it's a half turn, the arm position is pretty much set. It's a, it's a bent arm unit. Now you're gonna push from the shoulder. We talked about that um, tabletop. See how the hand kind of glides along that tabletop there. The racket hit stays above the hand. See how long go out to the target. A lot of people make the mistake of trying to recover too quickly and then they lose this hitting zone, right? If you're familiar with the inside out concept on a ground stroke, you almost want to think inside out swing on the volley as well. Meaning that you want to think of the swing going away from you as it goes forward when you play from the shoulder. All right. Okay, so let's just look at this one more time. I won't say anything. All right, and then quickly getting back ready for the next shot. Okay, so now have you seen it on video, let's uh, go through some trainings together. Did I do it right? <laughs> okay. Sorry, we got the, uh, the dog. <laughs> Sorry about that. I could, I could invite him up. <laughs> All right, so I hope it helped to see that. But the, um, as I said, the beauty of our system is that you can do a lot of training at home, especially going into the winter months. And um, the volleys, I find, is probably the easiest thing to work on. And I, I would tell you this, I was going for, as far to say this, if you spent maybe it was three or four days a week, five minutes a day building up to that, 
just doing the drills we're gonna do today and then the ones we'll show you on the 18th on Saturday. And you just do that for like five minutes, split between forehand and backhand, three, four times a week. Probably by the time the spring rolls around and you're going back outside, you'll probably notice a massive, massive improvement on your volleys, right? I'd almost say I could guarantee that because that was my experience, right? And that was probably four, six, four to six weeks I noticed a significant difference, right? So we're gonna show you some drills that you can do, can do to help you with that. So the first thing um, we're gonna talk about is, is are the feet. So I'm gonna turn around here and I want you just to kind of follow me as I do this. You know, you wanna have a nice sort of wide base. Your knees are slightly bent if I just turn from the side here. Okay, you see how my, my, I have like a positive tilt with my chest. Now, as we become more advanced, it's almost like you're kind of falling into the court a little bit. It's gonna help you cut the angle, right? So you're gonna be like this. Now, if I kind of get more in advanced ready position, you'll see how I end up stepping. Again, that just helps you move diagonally forward. So from this position here, we've got a nice wide base for the feet. We want to just simply step out with this foot. You want to take the inside of this heel and line it up to the imaginary ball. Now I want you to use your hand here right now. As you step out, I want your hand connected to that foot. So your palm is now facing the direction of the incoming ball in your mind. See how this is connected there? There. Okay, I'm going to show you from a different perspective. So we've done the split step. Oh, it's a forehand. Line up. Okay, this is going to help your serve return. Line up right there. Okay. Now let's talk about the the, the, the ready position a little bit. So in your ready position, you really want to be organized at the net. I mean, you want to have your elbows out in front of your hips like this. Okay, if your elbows are back, what happens is you end up having to use your arm too much. So if you really organize the ready position so that the arm is slightly bent, if you look from the side, as I pointed out, I could have been a little bit better on my volleys. See the elbows are out slightly, and you're looking over the tip of the racket. Okay, really well organized. You can drop a basketball between your arms, okay? Now you may see pros wait like this, but they are able to, to get the rack in position very quickly. When we see players wait like this, what happens is, is then they turn, now they have to add the arm, and you can just see what just happened there. Took too big a back, take back, became more of an independent arm movement. So pretty much the position you wanna be lined up with the ball, if I get back in a ready position, is pretty much the arm position. So how you start, will determine how you line up, all right? It's a bent arm structure, okay? Now, a little bit about the grips. Now, we, we can have some discussion here. Generally, we recommend here at OTI, you, have a, you make a slight grip change from forehand to backhand. Now, universally, most coaches will tell you have one grip, okay? There's certainly advantages and disadvantages. If you have one grip, you'll be on grip number two. The only difference is, is that naturally, where do the strings point? The strings are gonna to point to the, co the court to your left. So if you have a really flexible wrist and you can contact the ball a little bit later, then you can play with a Cornell volley, all right? Otherwise, we recommend a slight grip change to grip 2.5, right about there. So that's that ridge between grips two and three, all right? You can always check this out in the grip sections um, we even have it on YouTube to put online tennis instruction grips if you can't find it in any of your courses. But you want to be either on grip 2 or 2.5. Now, I personally use a 2.5. My friend Raven Claassen, top 10 in the world doubles player, he has a slight grip change from forehand to backhand, all right? So if you heard there's no time, well, <laughs> there actually is, you just haven't trained yourself to do it. But you can decide upon that. 2.5 just naturally will line up the strings to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the target. Grip two, it's gonna angle that way, so you have to then make a wrist and contact point adjustment, all right? So this would be grip two naturally, you just have to do this. This would be 2.5, see how I don't have to make any adjustments, okay? Now if you have a 2.5, you're gonna then have to make a grip change when you hit to go to your backhand to grip two. Okay, and we'll cover that next time, but just to kind of give you a little review on that. So you have the option 2.5 or two. That's what we recommend, okay. Now, with the, so from the ready position here, so we're gonna look over the tip of the racket, so follow along right now. You should look down, you should see here almost like there's a basketball between your arms. Elbows are out. Now from here, we're just gonna step out and line up. Now you notice as I make this half turn, I'm keeping the hands in front 
of my foot. Now, this is an exaggeration, all right? You generally, you can go back to, to about your shoulder, but I like to exaggerate this because most people swing anyway. So you almost want to think, if you're looking straight ahead, if you look straight ahead now, can you see the tip of the racket out of the corner of your eye? If your answer is yes, then you're doing a good job. If it's no, well, what will happen is you'll start to lose kinesthetic feedback and feel where the racket is. So you want to exaggerate that. So from my ready position here, I'm going to step up, line up, and I can still see the tip of the racket out of the, field, um, out of the corner of my eye there. All right. And one way to do that is to actually like kind of push the hands forward. It's a little bit of a cheat. Almost like I'm going around a corner here. Okay, just kind of cheating a little bit there. But now that sets you up really nicely. I always think it's best to exaggerate the short take back in the beginning. Okay, so from the ready position, you all follow me here. Okay, we're gonna step out, line up. Now, generally you wanna get this left arm across. Now, you'll see sometimes the arm is out here, that's a counterbalance. If, you, if, if it's low to the side, you've got a counterbalance. But generally, think of it's almost like you've got handcuffs, where the hands are closely close to each other but not connected, right? So you line up over here. So now from here, we're gonna contact the ball, but you're gonna push from your shoulder going forward like you're pushing the ball. Glide along the tabletop. You're gonna to go to meet the ball. As you do that, you're gonna then step through. You will contact the ball and then land. Now a very good way to get the timing of this, and again, this is a little bit of an exaggeration, but to get the timing of the step is to think you're gonna connect with the ball then you're gonna step. That will help you, and this has helped players in our clinics, to get the idea of stepping through, of having momentum, okay? You want body momentum. You get power from the ball and power from your legs, from your momentum, your body moving through it. So if you just look over here, I'm ready. I'm gonna line up. I'm gonna get lower because the ball's lower. I'm going to connect, then land. See, I've delayed the step, all right? So watch again, so I'm ready, line up, Connect, then land. Let me move it this way. I have the eye coach here just to show you, um, to give it a little more visual. If you have one, you can do the same thing. If not, just, just follow along still. So from a ready position, we line up. Now, if you've got the eye coach, you've got to get down, eyes, strings in line with the ball. See, they almost sit at the same level. You don't want to ball like this. I'm going to connect, then land. And the swing actually goes forward a little bit, all right? It glides forward. So ready here, line up, connect, then land. Now we're actually connecting and then I'm almost stepping, just to exaggerate it. Line up, connect, land, okay? I'll take this away for a sec. So I wanna do a couple of shadow swings there, everybody. So those of you who want to, you can add the split step. I'm not gonna do that. But I'm gonna give you time to do it if you want to, but it would just look like this. Split step, line up. How you do that, you push with your left foot to transfer the way to your right, connect, land, and then hold this position, right? I'm gonna do without the split though. Okay, so ready here, it's, oh, it's coming to my forehand, I've split. I'm going to step out, line up. I'm going to now connect, land, and you wanna hold this finish right here. See how the strings are still pointing somewhat forward. Obviously they come around a little bit, but they haven't, haven't um, lost the hitting zone there. Hands are close to touching, okay, like you're clapping. You're not quite connected though, right? So ready again. So line up, feel, if you can't feel it, push, put your feet together. Now if, if you're right-handed, you push with your left foot. If you're left-handed, push with your right. Push with your left foot and feel the weight transfer from the left foot to the right foot, okay? So ready, feel the weight transfer from the left to the right. You've lined up. Now, feel the weight transfer from the right foot to the left foot, okay? Come back, so ready? So weight onto the right, weight onto the left, okay? And again, weight to the right, weight to the left. All right, hopefully everyone's following along nicely. And when you transfer the weight from the right foot to the left foot, think of connecting with the ball first. Again, it's just more of a corrective teaching method just to help you get the timing. So I'm pushing with the left to transfer to the right, connect, then I finish on my left. 
All right. So we're going slowly. One, two. Okay. All right. So now let's try to go a little bit quicker. James, before I move on, is there, are there any questions that have come in at all? From you, Jane. Yeah, James is, James is a clothes horse. Hey, he likes him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was coming back from California uh, from Indian Wells and Val and I stopped. Uh, as Val Aaron, we stopped and uh, there was an outlet mall. I was like, I couldn't buy fine tennis shorts. You can't get them really. I maybe can get them now. So I was like, oh, I just bought like six pairs, <laughs> all different colors. All right. So the good news is that there are no questions. Hopefully it's been clear, but also you're training along, all right? You're following along. Okay, so let's go just a little bit quicker with that, all right? And the beauty of this, you can always play this recording back, but let's go a little bit quicker. All right? I'm not gonna split today, but I encourage you to do that. I'm gonna show you one with a split step or two, and then I'm gonna go slowly, just so we make sure everyone can follow along. But if you're splitting, it would look like this. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. All right, so let's do 10 more together. So ready here, line up, contact, land. Back to ready. Line up, contact, land. See, I'm holding that finish. I want you to make sure you hold that finish. Line up, contact, land. Feel the weight transfer, pushing from one foot to the other. Now it looks a little bit uh, mechanical right now, don't worry, that's how you learn mechanics. Try to be a little bit loose in your grip pressure. Line up, contact, land. Make sure you have a nice good ready position. Line up, contact, land. I think I'm on seven, James. I don't know if you kept count. Line up, contact, land. I'll do two more. Line up, contact, land. Hopefully we, we did more. We don't want to shortchange people in their training. All right, it's kind of like that professor lets you out of class early. It's like, well, you know, I did pay for this course. <laughs> you know, you, you, need to, you need to teach me. <laughs> All right, I've got uh, some professors on here, They're like, hmm. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna just show you from a different perspective as well. So I've got, look at the ready position here. Okay, got elbows out in front, basketball hoop. Okay, I like to have the index finger on the strings. Those of you who hit a two-handed back in volley, and there's nothing wrong with that. There seems to be some kind of, uh, I don't know, people, people don't like a two-handed back in volley, but hey, you know, it works for Kara Black. Apparently, I think Kevin Curran used a two-handed back in volley, so um, yeah, it's, if, you wait, if you're hitting two hands on the backhand on the volley, just wait with the hands stacked. Okay, I'm a one-hander, so ready here. I'm going to line up. Notice how my hands kind of push them in front a little bit. If you look forward, look forward right now, and in your mind, I just want you to say, can you see the racket tip out of the corner of your eye? Yes, you can hold that position. If it's no, just push the hands in front. Okay, let's try it one more time together from the ready position. Step out, look straight ahead. Do you see the racket tip out of the corner of your eye as you're looking in a forward direction? Yes, okay, good. Got to contact, then land. Hold this position. This is almost like I have handcuffs on, right? Back to the starting position. So ready, line up, contact, land. Okay, that's two. Ready here, line up, contact, land. Something else you notice from this position, look how my foot is also diagonally forward. Now why is that? Well, it helps me to cut the angle but also helps you maintain your forward momentum, right? If you step this way, you're more likely to go laterally, so the ball's gonna keep going away from you, but also you lose the momentum forward, right? Okay, so I think it was three, ready? So it's line up, contact, land. I'm gonna choke up my racket just because I'm very close to the wall there. Actually, I have more space here, there we go. So ready here, line up, contact, land, okay? Ready, line up. I feel my weight going forward over that leg. Contact, land. And again, line up, contact, land. The next five, I'm gonna go a lot faster, all right? Because you wanna start, you wanna start slowly, but then you wanna pick it up. And you can always do it throughout your training. Next time you do this, 
tomorrow, the next day, all right, at least every other day, start slow in the beginning, get a feel, and then speed it up. So I'm gonna speed it up, line up, contact, land. Really feel that delay. Line up, contact, land. Line up, contact, land. Line up, contact, land. Feel how butt cap is gliding along that tabletop. Okay, very, very important. Start slowly, understand it, then start to speed it up. And uh, maybe, see how I feel at the end of today's call, maybe I'll make it a little even more dynamic. You can also get a workout doing this as well with shadow movements. Okay, so that's just the basic basics with the shadow swing. Now, hopefully some of you have caught on that we like to use these foam balls, so hopefully you have something like that at home. Even something like this works. Uh, just, it's just less, with this ball, you're less likely to break things, <laughs> okay? Um, I won't guarantee you won't dent up your walls, but uh, uh, you won't less likely to break stuff. It will knock things over though. And also it slows things down. And it doesn't really, uh, especially in the US, drywall, back home in good old SA, it's all brick and mortar. It's like brick, you knock on this thing, it's <laughs> solid, all right? So obviously it's a little bit le less noisy, but also it's, I don't think you want to be batting up your walls, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to volley up against the wall. And today you may struggle with this if you've never done this before. Completely normal, right? We had people do this in our volley challenges during those lockdowns. And, you know, after a day or two, they're able to do this. It just takes a little bit of practice. That's all, all right? But you want to start now and just want to keep making improvements. So I'm going to recommend we choke up on our racket purely because it's less strenuous on your arms. So choking up means hold up on the top of the grip. Okay. If you hold here, it's just a longer lever. It's a little more weight. You start to feel in your forearm, right? Also it helps if you're inside, you, know, you need less space. Now I'm going to start with an open stance. This is a progression. So I'm going to start like this and I play off this leg because why you guessed it, right? lined up <laughs> okay so from the lineup position let me just demonstrate i'm gonna hit the ball up quite high and then i'm gonna try to keep that ball going now and you see how my racket is barely moving barely moving it's from the shoulder elbow arm is bent playing from the shoulder i'm adding little steps because i've done it so many times but you may be more flat-footed in the beginning okay all right so you notice the racket barely moved now you may have noticed something else Sometimes I get in trouble for this, but it's Greg, your racket's open. Well, yeah, that's why it's a little bit imperfect drill because of gravity, the ball comes down. So you do, all you're doing is just matching the strings so that they're perpendicular with the incoming trajectory of the ball, okay? So you're just pushing up. We are trying to hit flatter volleys, right? I'm not talking about flat, but it has less rotation. You don't wanna, I certainly subscribe to the idea, you don't want to add excessive spin because this takes a lot of timing, all right? This is a lot less timing. Plus, if you go back and study physics, I had someone else do it for us, Vic Braden, <laughs> um, a ball hit with underspin actually will bounce higher than a ball hit with topspin, okay? A ball with underspin will do this. It's the trajectory of topspin makes it bounce higher. So a flatter ball is gonna skid more. Okay, now if you really knife it, you can get the ball to skid, but that's a lot of extra timing, which, is not necessary. My friend Raven Clarson, when he volleys at you, you better believe it, you can read that sign and that ball's skidding, you can't even hit it, all right? It's easy for him, more difficult for you, all right? So we subscribe to that. You're not trying to wrist it, you're gonna get some degree of underspin, the racket face is ever so slightly open, close to vertical, all right? So you're not trying to cut the ball, we're just trying to push the back of the ball, hit it back flatter, okay? So let's try this together. Hopefully you have a place where you can do this. If not, I highly recommend that you find a way to do this where you have to go outside and find a way to volley up against the wall. As I was saying, you do this every other day till the spring comes, you prob you will, you will, sorry. <laughs> I was told, never said probably, <laughs> or quite nice, <laughs> um, you will improve your volleys, without a doubt. All right, so you're gonna start like this. Gonna keep, try to keep the racket in front if you can. I may back up a little bit further away. And then we're just gonna just push from the shoulder with a bent arm, right? So you're gonna try and get a rally going. Now some of you may go one, two. Some of you may have done this before. K 
okay? And you wanna keep it going. You can do like sets of 10 or 20, okay? So if those of you have already done this, I would like to continue this way. And from behind, you'll notice how my racket is tilted about 45 degrees to the right like this. See that, it's not here, it's not there, it's not here. It's just nicely like this, that's the angle, all right? Now, those of you who've never done this before, you just wanna look for small, um, small gains. So let's just see, can you feed the ball up and volley one back? So just feed it up and volley one back. Just try that, okay? Maybe one, one is too easy for you, so we're gonna just feed it up. I like to feed a little bit higher on the first one. One, two. Just start slowly, build that number up, okay? So I'm gonna to try to get to three now. So I go one, two, three. Okay, so that's how you would build it up, right? So let's do some volleys together, because now that I got you, and if you are following along, you have the ability to do this, let's do some training. So I'm gonna keep going, you keep going with me, or you go for small target goals, more, small achieve, goals you can achieve, and you know, go for two or three, stop, and start again. All right, so here we go, ready? And one, two, three. We should have a, a, a competition. James will send you a brandy cake, or was it whiskey cake? What do you, what do you, rum cake? Brandy, brandy cake. Yeah, compliments with James. <laughs> Except James drank all the brandy, so I don't know. Will it be a brandy cake? <laughs> You're embracing your heritage there, James. <laughs> All right, got a couple more here. All right, I'm gonna stop there, shake your arm out. If you're gripping down, I know some of you are with that, that eagle talon grip, your arm is probably burning, all right? So you gotta relax that grip pressure. How they say it in golf, squeeze the bird, hold the bird, don't squeeze it, don't choke it, but hold it just so that it doesn't fly away, all right? Nice and easy in that grip pressure. Shake the arm out. And again, that's why I want you to choke up on the racket and build up this number. Maybe you're gonna do it for a minute, but if you do this for the next four weeks, maybe you build up to three minutes. Uh, when we do back and forehand, I just go forehand, I get a little fatigued, then I switch to the backhand. All right, so you've got two weeks or a week and a half to build this up. Okay, now let's put it, uh, now let's get into a neutral stance because this was a progression, all right? Progression just so we can line up, get the idea of lining up. Now we get into a neutral stance. Now, again, this is an imperfect drill because you probably can't hit and then land. If you can, it's very difficult to do that. So it's more you're focusing on this, shorting the take back, pushing forward, racket above the hand, that pushing sensation. Uh, hitting the ball flatter, not trying to add excessive spin, all right? So now we're gonna get into neutral stance. First watch here, see my racket's above my hand. See that there, I'm trying to keep it in front of the shoulder if I can, okay? And now I'm gonna be in a neutral stance. Now initially, you may look like this very flat-footed. Okay, watch my racket first. See, it's barely moving. Barely moving. It's from the shoulder, bent arm unit. Okay, now watch my feet. See, I'm quite stationary. As you get better and better, you get used to this, you may start to take a little step. See, I'm taking little steps here. So, also, it stops you from getting pins and needles on my feet. <laughs> get that blood flow going. Okay, you can certainly go further back if you want to. All right, so. We're gonna do that together. Hopefully you have that set up. If not, do the shadow swings, all right? Do something. Okay, so let's do, um, I'm gonna sh show you, I just showed you the whole bunch in a row. So I'll build it up for those of you who need that. Those of you who have it, just keep going. Hit as many as you can. Start in that neutral stance. If you can, add the step. But everybody's gonna be a little bit different. Um, gonna be a little further along than others. Don't worry if you, this is your first time doing it. The good news is you're learning a very efficient way to hit volleys. And I can tell you this, I wish I knew how to volley this way, um, but it improved my volleys drastically as an adult, right? So, I'm gonna start like this, and you can just keep going, or you're gonna feed one in, let's try to get three. One, two, three. Stop the ball there, right? Okay, let's try it again. Feed the ball up. One, two, three. And feel how you're pushing from the shoulder. I'm sure some of you are feeling that wrist. That's the other good thing about the racket choked up. You can see that butt cap. Keep that butt cap 
down. You see how the racket kind of glides. You can see it very nicely. Let's try it again. Ready? One, two, three. Whoops, I miscounted. <laughs> All right, and we'll do it one more time slowly, okay? One, two, three. Okay. All right. And I'll just do one round where I'm going to go for quite some time. James is going to mail you his uh, brownie cake. His mom won't be, he won't be too popular around his mom. He's like, hey, James, where'd the brownie cake go? All right. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's try see how many we can get, right? Uh, I'll probably stop at a reasonable number. Uh, oh, I'll mess up. Here we go. So here we go. I'm going, to, I'm going to add the little step, keep the racket up. I've got my left hand out in front. Now, the more you do this, the more things you can bring in. You can bring in the step, you can bring in the left hand, you can even start to time the step every other one. You can move for the back. All right. And if you feel any fatiguing in your arm, any tiredness, any discomfort, definitely you want to stop, rest it. Just build up your tolerance to this. Okay, and this here is having done probably thousands of these, right? So it takes a little time, but you can get there, just build it up. Once you're done, shake your arm out. You can even just pull back like this. This is what I used to do every time after this. We had this big, uh, long red brick driveway. My mom had her hydrangeas, right? So it's like a flower bed there and there was a window and a window and I would just stand out here like this, boom, boom. All right, but in the beginning it was ugly. <laughs> and I was trying to volley like this as well. So this actually cleaned my volleys up without me realizing it. Um, yeah, so that's how you can work on your volley. We went through the shadow swings. We talked about you know, your, your ready position, but then lining up, connecting, landing. Okay, then we sped that up. And then we did some progressions against the wall. We started an open stance, choked up in the racket to start with, racket angled 45 degrees, slightly in front of you, played off the open stance to line up. And we've gone to a neutral stance, okay? So those, you just kind of work through those progressions. And little by little, by the time spring rolls around, you'll be uh, up at the net, serving, volleying, crushing, uh, crushing returns when you poach. Yeah, everyone will know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but just put, put the time in just a little bit each day, or at least every other day. Um, I did promise you this, and I'm feeling pretty good. I'll show you how you can also get a little bit of a workout doing this. So I'll give you two versions here. So those of you up for it, before I do that, I'm going to get a drink of water. I'm going give to you, give you opportunity to get some water if you need it. And James, are there any, any questions come in so far? Uh, yeah, there are quite a few questions, but I'd recommend doing the training now and then we'll go into the Q&A segment then okay. after that. So there's, there's nothing that would maybe help them with just something, nothing that stood out like, hey, maybe it would help them with their training now. You could maybe take this one from Artie saying, does the notion of leading with the, thr at the front thumb help with going through the ball? Uh, I've never heard that one. I always think palm, leading with the palm. Um, but I guess that helps you lay the wrist back. If I think, if, if I, think I, I know what you're saying, it helps keep that wrist laid back. So yeah, that could be a good one. But you, it's also palm guidance. And that's where, you know, always say how you own something is you go out there and you train, where you, you own it. But sometimes you come up with something that just helps you to do what I'm, or James, or Nadim, or Florin, or anyone else is asking you to do. So if it gets you to do the right thing, then by all means. If I think lead with the thumb, for me, it lays my wrist back and it keeps, it keeps that longer hitting zone for me. So I, that, to me, that's a good one, as long as you're not doing that. <laughs> okay. All right, well, let's do a little bit of, show you how you can also get a little cardio workout with this. So I'm gonna give you two versions. We're gonna do regular volley, we'll do low volleys, okay? So the regular volley, uh, I think how am I gonna, I'm gonna turn away from everybody. And I'll first show it to you and then we'll do it together. So you've got your ready position. We're going to add the split step, okay? Uh, so it may get a little bit ugly. <laughs> but, you know, we want to build it up, break it down. Build it up, break it down. You can always build it up again. So ready here, I'm going to show you a few. I'm going to split, line up, step, come back to ready. As soon as I land, I'm stepping out. Okay. So we're going to do, and what do you think, James? Set of 15. 15, all right. 
and you go as fast as you can do it at your, at your own intensity. If you need to stop, stop. But let's try 15 together. But I want to show you that you can get a pretty good cardiovascular workout and work on your volleys. Okay, so ready here. And one, two, three, four, five, six. I should have stopped at 10. Seven, eight, nine, 10. We two thirds of the way done. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. All right, so you may feel a little bit of burning in your lungs, in your legs. But you can see in this little area, you can get a really nice tennis specific workout. And actually this wall is actually a good one too. You can trace this wall here, all right? So and then the last one we'll do is the low volleys, knee touches. <laughs> now, of course, you can always go back to the other one that I just uh, showed you as well. I'm gonna use the eye coach for this just because it's actually a really good tool to you can, you can introduce if you have one at home. If not, don't worry, you can still work on this. I should have done this for the first one, James. So this is a little bit high for the low volley, but I'm gonna get down anyway. <laughs> so the knee touch volley, it's exactly that. The outside leg. You're gonna line up, so you're gonna hit it, see how my knee's almost touching the ground here. Okay? So we wanna get, line up nice and low here, and then we're gonna push up this way. Okay? Think about it on the screen a little bit. Um, so, You'll really feel your thighs burn here. So we're gonna do 10. <laughs> All right, so ready here? And you can always do the regular ones as well. So we're going to line up, knee touch there. Spring back into position. Spring back into position. I'm gonna take the eye coach away, giving you a little extra breather there. So I need to get lower. There, push back. See, I'm pushing my left foot to come back. So now I'm getting nice. Get my lunges in. Good quad work out here. James, I thought it was like eight. James obviously you're 15. He's laughing at me. This is 10, all right. Okay. So those of you who did that, you'll feel how, you feel how your quads are working. It's, it's very tennis specific. Hopefully it's fun. <laughs> I think it's fun. Um, get your heart rate going, get your cardio going, and you're working on something very tense specific on your volley and your low volley. So that's kind of what I have for you today. Um, I would like to show you a little bit about positioning, but let's maybe take a few questions and then I will talk a little bit about positioning using the whiteboard. Just something very, very quick and basic. Whew. See here, let's go on to the first one, which is coming in from John. He's saying, would you use the closed stance if the ball is close to you? Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, to me, you, your, your step, like the wider the ball is, the more you close the stance, right? You know, if the ball is closer to, to me, you're going to be more almost like in a semi. See that? Um, Actually, something I was going to show you, I talked about it on the screen. If the ball comes at you, if you have time, you can bring this, you can line up like this. It's the same on the serve return. So, ball's coming close to you, you can actually line up. See, so I'm lined up behind the ball, and I can step this way. To me, I'd be more in a semi open, John, when the ball's close to me, and more in a close when it's further away. All right? But I'll, I, I'm glad you, almost, you brought that up because I forgot to mention this. Ball comes at you, see, I'm still lined up. I can push forward. And of course, if it's hit really hard, then you'll hit a backhand volley. Okay, let's see the next one coming in from Joel. He's asking, when would you hit a swinging volley? When you hit a swinging volley. So, my wife thinks you should hit a sw swing volley every single time you on the baseline moving forward, taking a ball out of the air. I disagree. <laughs> Uh, I like to use, an, we call a mid-court approach volley most of the time, particularly if you're a doubles player, because it, it, you can transition to the net very nicely. 
but also singles you can move forward well it's actually a little less complicated longer hitting zone for me a swinging volley um, you know if you inside the court and the ball is hit high you want to take it out of the air uh, generally I go to the swinging volley when my opponent's way off the court because I have a big opening there and I'm just trying to finish the point I'm not trying to hit a swing volley when they they are inside the single sidelines because I find that then you you end up stopping and if they get there they can pass you you can't get to where we're going to show you in a little bit this neutral position at the net or good volume position so I like to say you know when your opponent's stretched and they're way off the court, they're popable up, you're moving from the baseline or inside the baseline and you hit that swing volley where you swing up more to overcome the downward trajectory of the ball. If your opponent is still within the confines of the single sidelines, they stretch, they're popable up, you would hit more what we call an approach volley, a mid-court volley with a longer follow through. Okay, let's go on to the next one coming in from Ross. Uh, maybe a two-part question. Uh, the first is, should you, not or should you take a couple more steps before you split step? That's the first one. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it depends, Ross. So, like when you're transitioning to the net, so if you're moving from the baseline past the service line to your good volume position or your neutral position, you're gonna, I like to talk about a stutter step like that because you can carry your momentum forward. A lot of people split and then they stop and then they lose momentum going forward. Now, Federer, he splits and go, he splits but keeps going forward. But I find that the stutter step, when you're transitioning, right? Now, when you already have position on the baseline or position at the net, you would split step. Uh, the question was, do you take more steps before the split step or after the split step? He's just asking, should you take a couple small steps before you split? Uh, well, yeah, it, 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 all, it, it, it depends. So, you know, if you're already in your, um, I knew I should have done this part first. <laughs> if you're already in position at the net and you're bisecting the angles, you're going to be splitting and then you're going to be trying to read where your opponent's going to pass, right? But if you're out of position, if you're too far back, right? Or if you are, you know, too far to your recovery position, then you've got to get into position to bisect the angle before you split. So if you're not in position to bisect the angles, yes, you have to make adjustments before you split step. You know, I used to, if you looked at my previous courses, I would call this position kind of midway between the net and the service line, I used to call it good volleying position. And the position, three feet up, around about there to the net, I would call that ideal volleying position, okay? But then I try to integrate with everything else that we talk, talk in strategy. So, and the, this makes a little more sense. Now we have, and obviously this position will change depending on what you're playing, singles, doubles, where you hit the ball midway between net and service line we call that neutral right right up on the net by three feet we call it offense and then back here on the service line you guessed it defense all right you can hear everyone saying defense so these are your basic positions according to your proximity to the net so you know if you're in a offensive area you have the best view of the tennis court. You're looking over the net, they say you have 150 degrees of volleying potential. So you have a huge area to hit into, okay? Now, the problem if you're volleying from over here and you're staying there, or yeah, wherever it is, you're staying here, what issues could you run into? Even though that's the best view of the court, the most amount of angles, if you set up right there, what's gonna happen? You're gonna get locked, right? So you almost wanna get into this position to finish the point. Now, if you're in a neutral position, they say you have about 30 degrees of volume potential, right? So you see how you just lost 120 degrees, right? But it's a good position because if your opponent floats the ball, you can move into offense and look to put the ball away. If your opponent lobs, you can cross back, take crossover steps as James showed you uh, last two weeks ago, maybe a week ago. Take crossover steps to defense where you can cover the lob, right? So you, you can move back and forth. Now you don't want to be set up in defense because if you're in defense, well, you've given angle away, right? Your opponent can pass you, they can hit the ball low to your feet, but you can do great covering lobs. 
So you can see each position has its advantages and disadvantages. Now, certainly if you're playing doubles and person just keeps lobbing you, well, then you would obviously stand closer to defense than to neutral. And you would look to see if that ball is going to float where you can volley it and go forward or if they can go to your feet. But these are the key positions here. So, you know, when, you, when you're up at the net, so let's talk about, um, uh, well, singles. When you hit that approach shot, you want to get more into this neutral position, right? Doubles, when you are the service partner, you the service part of the net, you can be more in a neutral position. Now, I like to be a little bit back from neutral, because if you notice, I'm always kind of moving forward, all right? So it just helps me to, to, to get back if I need to, all right? But I'm always going forward from this position. So that's kind of your neutral position there, all right? Now, when it comes down to playing um, s singles, if you hit an approach shot right here, where should you recover to? Where should you get to in, in, your, off, in, in your neutral position? Should you get to position A, B, or C? If this is your approach shot, okay? Well, some people think they've got to go to B, but really you want to go closer to A. You want to be, you want to be covering the down the line pass first, okay? So you can cut that off. If your opponent chooses to go cross court, with a diagonal step, with that out, with loading the outside leg, you can cut that angle off. So you're gonna be on the same side as the approach shot, as the ball in singles, all right? So if you had a hit to volley over here, you would then have to then move over to C, okay? And that's, you know, if you, if you can position yourself accordingly, then uh, you make it very difficult for your opponent to pass you. When you come to the net, you come in to take time and space from your opponent, okay? So, you know, if you only get into this position here, number one, they can probably pass you and also can go load your feet. So if you can get in over here, as I've shown, you can cut the angles off. You give them between one and four degrees to hit a passing shot, okay? So you're gonna be the same side of the ball. Now, if you're coming in, we're talking singles. If you come in, let's go to the back end this time around. Most people hit the ball high and longer. That's the side you usually want to approach to. If they hit the ball really well, low to your feet, we say you hold the line, go back to where it came from. Okay. If you hit a low vol and you try to go open court, the ball will actually sit up. You have to come this way. Your opponent has a ball that's now sitting up, that's hit softer, they most likely will pass you. Right. So if the ball comes in low, deep, sorry, low, <laughs> short, or it's hit very well, hold the line. Okay, hold the line on that ball. Now, let me move these lines here. Now let's just say the ball is, um, sits up a little bit. Well then you would move, whoops, from your neutral position to offense right here. And now you have options. And I like to draw this line like this, and this is both sides is true. When you ask someone, it's a little bit off. When you ask someone, if you're following from here, where are you going to aim? Where's your target? Okay. 99% of people, well, maybe we'll, we'll say 95. We'll say it right here. Okay. What's wrong with that? <laughs> James, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Way too close to the lines. All right. And this is often the, 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 the number one answer is right there. Okay. Margin for safety. So that's why we have this median line right here, midway between this side line and the middle line. And if your opponent's hitting from here and they hit a ball that sits up and you get to this position, just aim along this line. Because the angle of the ball will take it off the court. And most people will tell you aim there and they hit the ball here. Give yourself that margin for safety, right? The bounce of the ball will take the ball off the court. Um, so, so that's where you would aim cross court, but you only go cross court or to the open court, excuse me, when you can stick the volley. When the ball's above the net, you can get closer to offense and you can give it some stick, all right? You can hit it. Um, a little bit about the depth of your target, and I'll move on to some doubles, is if 
If you go the next time you're in the tennis court, place three tennis balls in these three positions. Stand right here. Look over the net. Which of those X's or tennis balls will you see? Only this one. So when you're on defense, your percentage target is, is deep, right? Now if you get into neutral, stand there, you look over the net, you'll see these two balls. So now you have an option, you can go there or you have a more, more angle this way, off the court. If you get into offense and you stand and look over the net, you'll see all three targets. Now you can hit this target. But a lot of people stand back here or here, try to hit this target and end up hitting the ball into the net, okay? So next time you're on the court, just do the exercise and your proximity to the net will determine the depth of your target. The closer you are to the net, the shorter you can aim, the greater angle you have, okay? And you wanna have a target in mind. No matter how great your volleys are, if you don't have a target, you just say, oh, I'm hitting somewhere here, guarantee you'll probably miss. But if you say, no, I'm hitting here, or I'm hitting here, I'm hitting here, the chance of success of making that shot will drastically increase, okay? Now, for doubles, real quick. <laughs> Actually, James, any questions on singles? Real quick. Limited to volleys. <laughs> okay. Hopefully that was clear. Uh, now, now, doubles, uh, you know, you're going to be roundabout neutral. I always recommend towards the middle of the box when you're the pa pa partner's server at the net. When you're, excuse me, when your partner is serving, you're towards the middle of the box. Okay, you get make some adjustments. I'm not going to get into all that, right? Um, and, you know, you're looking to intercept the ball. You're probably going to be moving, kind of to cut this off here if you can. If you don't, then when it, the ball gets past you, you're going to drop back closer to that defensive position. If your opponent's way off the court, you're probably going to drop back here. Okay? Um, so you're going to be more in that neutral position to begin with. Now, let's just say there's a player right here. You're right here. Your partner is hitting. Let's see here. To this person. All right. This person drills the ball at you at the net. Now, you're probably moving forward at this point, actually, because they're hitting. You're moving forward. This person drills you at the net. It's a really hard. Where should you go? Okay. Well, it's very difficult to change direction, so I recommend usually you're going to go back deep at that person. Okay. Some people may say go here, but remember, the ball's coming in really hard, and you just... It's very difficult to change direction of the ball if you don't have incoming speed, right? So you go back at him. Now, if that person happens to float the ball, well, then you move into the offense, and you just think, thank you very much. You put it right there. How often do I watch doubles at the club? The ball floats, and this player goes back to that player, giving the way that advantage, okay? Now, when, when can you go at this person? Okay, and you want to go to this net person, if there's a person back here, if there's a ball that's above the net and you are close to the net, you can go towards their feet. Okay, if you're back here and the ball's hit hard and low, if you go to this person, they can now close into offense, and then they can now have that big target we talked about, right? So, ball's hit hard at you, you generally go back at this person. If the ball floats, you try to take it here. If you're poaching, on the high, oh, sorry, when you go to this person, you got to make sure you have a ball that's above the net where you can get to more offensive position, okay? Now, the other mistake I see a lot, I see this mistake a lot. Let's see here. We have a rally and the ball sits up. This person goes into this offensive error and they miss the ball wide, okay? I always say this, when you are volleying in cross-court and doubles, don't use it on doubles alley. Aim just inside the singles court. That's your margin for safety. That's a massive mistake I see. So if you get that opportunity, play with inside the singles court, all right? And generally in doubles, you only hit an angle if you can finish the point, because an angle equals an angle. However, if you're playing someone who cannot move, and that's a weakness of them, then of course you would stretch them to get a weak response, okay? But that's a key, key one to remember. And then just a little bit lastly about your positionings is, 
when your partner is sur uh, returning, you're going to be more in a defensive position most of the time. All right. The reason is you're in the hot seat. If this person poaches, you have a better chance to react. If you're standing over here, or you've left this, the middle open, plus you're probably going to get tagged. The only time you would stand right here returning if this person has a weak serve and your partner's, partner's moving in, excuse me, and being aggressive. It's called an attacking offensive position at the net uh, when you're the returner's partner. All right, so that was a quick crash course on things, but it's important that you know where you want to recover to, where you want to be, and you want to kind of have an idea where your targets are, all right? Because if you don't have a target, you don't have intention, you don't have purpose. You want to hit every shot with intention and purpose, and you want to know what your target is. All right. Yeah, great job, Greg, on the train along and also on the whiteboard session. That was great. Now, real quick, before we, before we wrap this call up, just give some feedback in the chat. Let's see. Did you enjoy the call? Did it help you? If it didn't, by all means, say no. Let's get some <laughs> feedback in here. Let's see. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. John, good stuff. Excellent. Yes. Nice. Good stuff. And before we leave, like I always ask, I always ask in these live calls, since I want to get you thinking about your, your goals, what you want to achieve. There's a, it's a two-part question. The first is, what would you rate your current net game right now on a scale from zero to 10? Zero being the lowest, 10 being the highest. And then the second part to that is, how much would you like to improve that score over the next you know, four to eight weeks? So let's see two numbers off you guys. So your current rating and then your improved rating. Edward, five to seven. Bill, seven to nine. Nice. Rebecca, five to eight. Greg, four to seven, seven to nine. Six, four to eight, seven to nine, seven to nine. Nice, guys. It's good. Well, luckily for you, you've got uh, one of the best instructors here to take you through that and get you to those numbers. And how are we going to get there, guys and ladies? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Practice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Taking action. <laughs> action. Belief. I'm going to go from a five to an eight. So I'm going to take action. And then with action, I'm going to, what was the other one, James? The third one? Action. Um, you uh, have, result. is it? Oh, I have sure it right here. Yeah, I forgot. I have it right here to remind myself. And I'm not going to find it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> There was action, there was belief, and it was kind of like success result, which yeah. feeds your belief. And mm -hmm. you, you want to look for these small little in increments, small improvements. And then once you make a small improvement, you take, you, you believe more, you take more action, you, you, you improve, which, even, which, which fuels that and keeps working like this. And you want to make small little improvements. But uh, use this time in the winter. You can do a lot of great things on your volley, other strokes as well. But also you can do get quite a good workout as well, which I'm sure some of you experienced. Yeah, but thank you all for joining us today. There's quite a few people on the call. You can find the recording of this call. Um, I'll set up a, a page tomorrow and I'll send an email for it so you can find it very easily. But thank you all for joining us today. And the next live call will be held on Saturday the 18th at 12 Eastern, 12 noon Eastern time. So keep an eye out for that. Greg, I look forward to seeing you in it since it's going to be very close to Christmas. So uh, yeah, got some Christmas spirit. James yeah, may but... surprise us. <laughs> well, I look I forward to seeing you guys cake, in the next James. one. Uh, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone, yeah. thank you so much for joining us, James. Thank you. And uh, look forward to seeing everybody in the next call. See you guys.